The history of Chester starts with its corporation in 1836, but its roots reach back to 1672. At this time, Chester was known as the Patacunk Section of Saybrook. The Patacunk Section later became the fourth religious society of Old Saybrook and was finally named Chester by Abraham Waterhouse after a town in England. Chester separated from Saybrook and became an independent town by permission of the General Assembly in 1836. At the end of the last ice age, about 11,000 years ago, the present-day Connecticut River came into existence. Since that time, humans have lived along its shores. Native American populations flourished in the valley as the climate became progressively milder and more temperate. The Chester Hadline Ferry, with its western terminal at Chester, first provided service in 1769. The ferry's first launch is credited to Captain Jonathan Warner and remains today a vital part of the Connecticut transportation system. It's now owned and operated by the state of Connecticut and is the last ferry still used to cross the Connecticut River. Another form of transportation is the Essex steam train that passes through Chester daily. The ride takes passengers from Essex to Chester, then back to Deep River, at which point there is an option to swing to the Becky Thatcher Riverboat for a trip up to the East Haddam Swing Bridge and then back to Deep River Landing. The train then takes passengers back to Essex. The Chester Library had its inception in 1875, and for 20 years, the enthusiasm and efforts of a few interested parties kept it alive. Eventually, the town gave its support, and then the state contributed. And in 1907, S. Mills Eli made it possible to build the present building, where 6,000 books are cataloged. Currently, the population of Chester is at 3,832 as of the 2009 census and is 16.5 square miles. With Concaponson State Park, the Connecticut River, and Cedar Lake providing a considerable part of Chester's border, an adventure into nature is never far from home. This year, my husband and I moved to Chester with my, my four-and-a-half-year-old daughter. And uh, we moved, we decided to move to Chester because it's um, a very small town. In fact, there are only about, I want to say between 3,000 and 4,000 residents in the town. Um, and we knew that we enjoyed, we wanted to live in a smaller village community um, that included the schools that um, they have in Chester, which is actually just one elementary school and it's independent. and. Um, it is a very small school. When my daughter ends up um, going to school, which will be next year in September, she will likely have between 12 and 15 students in her class. And we thought that that would be just one way that um, she would be able to be to make you know new friends, but also have um, you know a very high quality of education. Regional District 4 covers Chester and the surrounding Valley Shore, including Essex and Deep River. Many of the present buildings in Chester were created from old manufacturing companies of the early 1900s. For example, the Roger Brush Shop, which is an old brush mill, has been turned into a classic restaurant that serves American cuisine in an elegant setting overlooking the old waterfall. Among the other old establishments is the C.J. Bates and Sons Knitting Needle Factory that has now been transformed into the Goodspeed Theater, named after Norma Terrace, an American theater star. Also in town is the Patacunk River, a fun place to swim in the summer or relax and enjoy the colorful fall foliage. This gorgeous brook flows under Main Street and behind many of the shops and restaurants. Named after this body of water, the Patacunk Restaurant and Bar serves delicious American cuisine and provides tables that overlook the beautiful brook. Another building on Main Street is the Chester Museum at the Mill, a historical gallery overlooking a scenic waterfall. We have a museum here that's about four years old, uh, located right off the center of Chester. And uh, the, although the mill site has been here since the mid-1800s, uh, as I said, our museum has only been open four years. We have two floors of exhibits here. Uh, the downstairs floor is changing exhibits, where uh, we will pick up a particular theme. Uh, for instance, this year is on transportation over 100 years in Chester and the various changes that occurred. And then upstairs, we also have a more permanent exhibit, which tells the story of Chester and how it evolved from uh, industries along the streams uh, to uh, about the 1950s and, and how these industries uh, flourished, small, small industries, et cetera, and how work evolved and people evolved along the, along the way. Now, Chester 
is unique in some ways, but it's not unique in, in others. Uh, the, the lower portion of the Connecticut River, um, from Middletown down through Deep River into, Sabre, uh, into Essex, uh, is quite hilly on both sides. And that produced a number of streams, which in turn gave us the water power for small industries back in the 1800s to uh, flourish. And they built along these streams and controlled the water, which provided in turn the power to these. And that's in contrast to, let's say if you go a little further down the stream, down the river, to Old Saybrook and Old Lyme, where they're virtually flat down there. And so they could not have these same type industries in those locations. Also on Main Street is a weekly Sunday's farmer market and town-wide celebration of the community. Only Connecticut-grown agriculture, locally produced food, and regionally made delights are featured at this market. Each week, the town unites and engages the small town by highlighting community organizations, local musicians, and chefs, as well as vibrant Chester businesses.